Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ugo Vigogo and it's nice to have you back. So today I'll be talking together about the story of the four lepers in 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 3 to 11. This story is about some um, four lepers that were very hungry, they were starving. In those days, lepers were outcast. They were not they we could not stay with normal people and this could cause them to, to starve to death because you know they didn't have access to some resources that they don't that the normal man will have they were just you know tossed at the end very very end of the city because they didn't want people to come in contact with them now these four lepers were like hungry and in verse 3 it says now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates why should we sit here waiting to die they asked each other and one thing that the lord has been teaching me is that um if the system does not work you have to change it, it um what does it mean some of us are going through certain things we are going through some challenges and we're just waiting for things to happen to us for things to fall into place we have an idea of what we, want. we have a plan we have we have something that we want to do but then you know the system around us is not working um recently you know when i was in church the pastor said something and he said until you're ready to change nothing will change these lepers they were ready to leave that state and go and search for food and i think in the verse below they were like see if we stay here we die if we go there they will kill us uh, we might as well die one thing I've been learning is that people in the Bible that said, if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. They actually never died. Esther, the three Hebrew boys. And here they were like, you know what, we might as well die, so let's just continue and let's just, you know, help ourselves. And one thing that I love about this passage is that they had to move first for them to see the deliverance that God was going to give them. For them to see the provision that God was going to give them. Sometimes for you to receive God's provision, you might have to, you will have to go forward. For you to indeed get that job, you will have to apply. Once you, um, for you to get good results, you have to really, you have to go through the process. And this process might be filled with doubts where you feel like, oh my God, will he, would they favor me would 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 will would, would i get this thing but god is saying that you should move forward you have to you have to change you have to change where you are i remember the disciples praying for i think a guy that was you know possessed and jesus christ came and said this kind can only be done through prayer and fasting hence the system had to change the method had to change if there's a method that you are using right now that is not working for you you are trying to seek intimacy with god but you're not taking out time to spend time with him you're not reading the word of god you're not communing with him you're not trying to um um, get good circles friendship circles that will impact knowledge into you. You're not trying to learn You're not trying to fellowship with the brethren. You have to change your system Um You know they said if we die we die that's the kind of uh, faith that God is trying to build in our lives where We don't really care about what the world around us is saying right now. What matters to us is that we have a God that would deliver us. The Hebrew boy said, we have a God that would deliver us. But even if he doesn't, it will not cause us to bend. And here, I just love the fact that they were ready to face the obstacle. They were going to die, you know. Because lepers are not allowed to be seen with normal human beings. Um, one thing I also um, learned that the Holy Spirit really reminded me was that these people were, they were lepers. And the thing about leprosy is that, you know, if you have leprosy in your hand, you begin to lose sensitivity in that area. So there's a lack of sensitivity in that area, in your leg, wherever it is. And, you know, God was just really saying, don't be among those that will lack sensitivity when I'm telling them to go. You'll be thinking about your condition. God, this is where I am. God, I have graduated with this. I will not be able to get that job. They require somebody that got a first class. I got a 2-2. Two -two. They require somebody that got a 2-1. I got a third. You're still thinking about your situation. And one thing is that if we do not obey God, we begin to... Um, what is it called? We begin to get desensitized to his voice and to his leading. When he's saying go, 
you go and one thing that i was really learning from these guys is that they didn't allow the leprosy stop them one thing i also realized is that you know the world had already rejected them but they didn't reject themselves and i'm telling you today that even if the world rejects you don't reject yourself do not reject yourself do not reject yourself even if the world rejects you do not reject yourself these ones um there's a passage in the bible that says um rejected by men but chosen by god and it was talking about jesus christ now we have we we have become as Jesus we have we have died to sin we have risen and we are now with Christ seated in heavenly places so we indeed need to be like Jesus where even though we were rejected by men we are chosen by God so you choose yourself even if you do not qualify you choose yourself because if you wait for the world to choose you when they give you disapproval you will go into depression it's a it's a very important word so I just encourage somebody right now that you should not lose your sensitivity to God's voice. Do not allow leprosy take over you. Sometimes we get we get so angry because things are not working for us, and we become so disobedient to God. God does not want that from us. It goes on to say when these men went to the camp of the Arameans hmm. no one was there do you understand that they needed to move to see their provision they needed to go from their place of comfort to see their provision these are men with leprosy so moving would have been a challenge moving would have been hard but they decided to move. Sometimes you're gonna have to leave your comfort. What is sometimes? All the time, you're gonna have to leave your comfort zone to get growth. Now, no one was there. Do you know what I love about this? Immediately, I, I, I saw that phrase, no one was there. I remember the passage in Proverbs chapter 25 verse 16, I think. Let me just cross check. No, 26 verse 13 which says the lazy man claims there's a lion on the road there's a lion outside only a lazy man will say ah oh, there's somebody there. but they have not gone the lazy man has not gone to check but they went and they said that there was no one there why because god caused the arabian armies to hear a sound of chariots horses as though the people of israel were going to attack them Oh wow, I remember the story of Elisha and his um, assistant Gehazi where the people where they came to um, attack them and Gehazi was so scared and Elisha, Elisha prayed a prayer and said God show him that the one that is with us is greater than the one that is with them. Sometimes you're not going to have to use your physical eyes, you have to see with faith. Because when you look at your physical eyes, you will see all the obstacles. You will see the people that have said no to you. You will see the people that have rejected you. But then when you look in faith, you see that you have not been rejected by God. There was no one there. But they had to move. If you need to do something right now, I want you to do it because God is telling you to move. God is telling you to move because there is no one there. The thing we fear the most is invisible. It's not there. We fear the unknown. One thing that can kill the human mind is the fear of the unknown. When you get there, there's nothing there. Also, um, an important point I learned is these ones that were rejected now became, you know, when they, the, what was funny is that when they went to the Arabian army's camp, they saw gold, they saw things, food, they packed, they hid some, they packed, they hid some. <laughs> and they were like, oh, it's not fair. Let's go and tell the people as well so that they too can come and also get involved in this feast, this free feast. The ones that were rejected by men became the proclaimers of good news. The ones that were rejected by men were like deliverers. You know what God was teaching me? That he will cause you a light to shine. That the unbeliever will choose you because he loves your work ethic. 
because he loves the way you do things because he loves that you're a believer because he loves your light ah i'm so excited all believers will see your light i say i want that one you know you might be scared saying there's a line outside they will not employ me because i'm a christian because i'm, I'm a believer they will not employ me but now God is saying that they will employ you because you're a believer, because they love your work ethic, they love your God. Esther said, if I die, I die. She went in front of the king, and the king made the people reverence God Almighty. The three Hebrew boys, they went to the fire. If we die, we die. But they made the king reverence his Amen. The Lord God Almighty. There's a verse that comes to mind, Psalm 67, verse 7, that says, The Lord will bless us, that the people of the world will fear Him. You know the kind of blessing that will scatter the brain of a man? It will scatter the brain of the unbeliever. And I'm just encouraging somebody right now go. <laughs> That's all I have to tell you. Go. There's provision where you go. You know, God will, wherever God takes you, He will provide for you. And even when you cannot see this provision, you have faith, dangerous faith, that when you get there, when you get there, there will be provision. If Abraham waited for God to really explain what the land will look like, what the blessings will look like, he would have never left his father's land. And God is telling you to get up. I move to the place that I will show you, that I will lead you. It might be scary, it might feel daunting, but God is calling people. God is calling the potential out of you. Come out of that thing. Come out of that leprosy. Come out of that lack of sensitivity and hear my voice right now. I'm telling you go because I'm giving you provision to do that which I have called you. I don't know whose word this is for, but it's definitely for me and for somebody else. But receive the word with faith. I pray, Lord, that those of us that are afraid of the, that are afraid of the unknown, God, give us strength. Give us faith. Let us trust in you despite the darkness we see around us. Because ye though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For thou art with us. The rod and the staff, they comfort us. Lord God, I pray, oh God, that we will not lose our sensitivity. That even when the devil will try and take us through things or make us go through things that will bruise us. That in those scars, we know that there is a God that says, a God that heals. A God that heals the brokenhearted, Lord. Even those of us that have been rejected by men, remind us that you, are, you love us. You are pleased with us and we are children of God. Lord, I pray for those that are applying for certain things. They're applying to go to school, applying for jobs, and it's seeming difficult. God, I pray that you will give them provision. That even though that the application have, might have said that they are not qualified, God, I pray that you qualify them. Because the Bible says, our qualification comes from you. Our qualification comes from you. Let that be our testimony in the name of Jesus. I come against you, spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And we do not associate ourselves with you. We will not be as the lazy man that said there's a lion outside. But we will be as Daniel that even though there is a lion, the lion will respond to your authority. The lion, the, the, the lion's mouth will be shut in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' precious, precious name I pray. Amen. So, I hope that word was received. Receive the word with open arms. God is speaking to you. I'm so excited. I don't know why, but...